Um, in terms of the patterns of the water flow, you'll see a bit of trash floating on the top. So, and watch that, that tells you what the water's doing. And there's all sorts of interesting patterns like this one building right there. Water's come down and imagine that was bigger. There's a couple of trees falling across it. And see the water's flowing down and it gets to that and it starts swirling. And what that means, that's a pattern you want to see when water's swirling around, it's de-energizing. The water coming into it is de-energized. See how slow it's, it's floating? Um, and when we build structures back into water courses where we've got active erosion or something, they are the types of patterns that we're trying to create. Um, and because that water's really slow, if we had a lot of water full of sediment, if we dropped a bit of clay in there, it'd come down, it'd be carried down and it'd drop there. There's a bit of a pool, there's a step, pool forms behind it, and sediment drops in that pool. Um, and the interesting bit to watch, there's another one over there. That's a really good one there. Yep. So we're trying to create those patterns uh, to de-energize water. And the other bit is the litter comes down. You watch the litter comes down, it'll start to get trapped. It's been trapped in exactly the point that it needs to be trapped. This is a critical bit. So that slider put up on that track that was washing down, litter had come down and been trapped and formed a, a, um, a bit of a, a, a check bank in the spot was needed and the check bank above it was formed right at the back of the pond as Lance was showing. So it ponded back to the next one. Mother Nature will do it every time. What she needs is water and trash. If you burn your country, you don't have it. That's one of the biggest reasons that fire is decimating our landscape. We're, we've removed the building materials that Mother Nature burns. And they will start lining up in contours across that. So where that's missing and when it's been degraded, that's what we've done out. We've removed that contour. And you can see this section here where there's no material on the ground, it's actually rushing through quite quickly to here where there's another little step and it's hopefully going to build up its own little thing there. So at the moment, there's a little gap there, swirling around, that will clog up soon. Fingers crossed. No, it will. Just needs a little bit more litter. Yeah. And this is where we come in. We just provide a little bit of organic matter and stuff to block it up. So if you haven't burnt and there's enough of that litter, there it goes. Happens every time and it happens exactly where it needs to be and what Lance and I and, um, and Cole do is we spend a lot of time out in country studying that. So even when it's not flowing, you can go back and look at it and see where's, where's the sand bean deposits, where's the litter, and you can start to learn the patterns. And all we do, are, we're trying to replicate those and rebuild those patterns quicker. And sometimes it might not be actually in the creek that you're looking, it might be just to the side where if it's broken through, it's obviously not going to be in that creek, but just to the side, there might be a build-up of darker soil, organic matter, that just shows that that's where that natural step was. So do we want to put an erosion creek in? Yeah, I guess we can. All right, so you had a big flood event. It all been burned off, and you've got an erosion creek flooded back there. So that's, that's what erosion does. Admittedly, that was a little bit quicker than it normally happens, but but, but, it'll but, happen. but you can see that that'll, it, in terms of the time scales, it happens very quickly, naturally, if, if you start something like that. And what has happened as soon as that erosion creek cut up, water stopped flowing out there. We've dehydrated all of that. As this gets deeper and deeper, that gets dehydrated. So you used to have good grasslands that wide, and the erosion creek will that. This one's still working. It's come back to life, which is good. Probably because we didn't go up high enough. Most of the Australian landscape that's not too steep has now got um, creeks cut back through them. They were never, ever there. Almost all the creeks you see anywhere in Australia on flatter country have come in the last 200 years. Look at the size of the trees just out of it. You get huge, big old gum trees, 200 years or more and look at in that incised creeks and there'll be much younger trees. If you see that, you know it's, it's uh, the result of white management the last couple hundred years. Um, so now we've built that, it's about how we fix it. Yeah. Lance, you want to have a crack? 
Well, we try and find a spot and I'm gonna work on this little, where we've already got a pool here. So. Chuck a in there, mate. <laughs> So we're just going to put a contour in, hopefully on the contour. I'm going to take a bit of grass out here unfortunately, but we try and avoid that if we can. What we might do is we'll just spill it there I think. I think. The, the bit to notice back here is that whirlpool. If, so if that water flows in layers, um, and air flows in layers. It doesn't matter what the top layer is doing, it only matters what the bottom one. So if that pattern is, we get it right and that pattern is stable, we can put a meter over it and that won't shift. Literally. And we build them on beach sand and had water flow over the top. When we get the pattern, that swirling, those swirls on the bottom, a stable where a whole pile of water comes over. So you go back and think, oh, the beach sand will watch way, or you know, it's white, gutless, West Midland sand. Um, and it's there, if we get the design right. I haven't got quite got the contour right there, I've gone downhill a bit, but... So you can see now that the water is actually stored in there. It's probably going to spill out here a bit quicker, but... I thought you were doing that for demonstration. No, I, 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 I just got a bit downhill, but... When our, when our laser doesn't work, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my head laser is not quite working, but anyway, it, actually it's not too bad. Yeah, that's coming out the other side. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it's good. But you see, normally you wouldn't disturb it, but you try and keep that nice and wide. But you can see how we've actually spread the water already. I've even got another, on a bit of slope again, but. Yeah, the level helps. <laughs> But you can see it also took quite a while to fill that, just the little hollow behind the contour. So that water is actually soaking into the ground as well, which is what we want. And it'll be seeping through underneath. So it's seeping down that whole front. So that's how you keep water for three months in a landscape rather than a day. Now we can also see that this water here that I've, it's coming out this sill, it's coming back to the creek here. So we might, this is might be where we put another contour in. There's another one here too, Lance. So we've imagined that was vegetation. Now if you're flying over, you'll see all this vegetation. You've actually got a contour of vegetation. Right. And they don't happen by accident. Um, so you've actually, we've got a pond up there. Yeah, we've got a little pond there. We've got a pond behind this. A pond there, and there's another natural contour and there'll be a series of these ponds down it um, until, unless we've overgrazed it or overburnt it and, and we lose that, or we, what those uh, mulga ones, it's just nicked back through part of it and it's drained all the ponds. Yeah. So, yeah, we're lazy. It's, it's about doing as little work as possible and let Mother Nature do. You know, that girls, that happens all the time, doesn't it? That's how it works. <laughs> Um, and she'll do the bulk of the work. We're just going to be smart about the little bit that we do and, and read the patterns in the landscape and you can figure it out. Any other, anything else you want to build? Hang on two. Um, probably a little bit. We build different structures. Can you make us a dirty great big? Okay. So that's an insource creek coming down. And so we'll go and build structures and there's a whole pile of different shapes. Um, so I might build one and then these guys can. So that's a critical point. The shape we would build, build up at bank, is thicker at that side. So it's thicker this, on the this outside where the higher velocity in the machine. And there, so while it used to be fast water running around there, we ever got it right, we spread it out wider, lower and low frequency. And as the flood builds up, it comes up that bank. 
So that's a simple design. Do you want to do one of yours? So one, one thing with natural water flow is you'll see that the highest velocity is on the outside. And you'll see in any river system, the deepest part of the flow is on that outside bank. And that's where, the, and that's where your erosion happens. And that's why if you look at the big systems like the Murray River, they actually form big loops that come out like this and they just keep going out and that's how the billabongs form. Um, a leaky weir, you got rocks. And the pattern is a horseshoe shape into the water and it's higher on the outside. And on the inside. Um, so that if I get it right, the water, the faster water goes through the middle, the slow water comes in the side and you'll build a, a plunge pool in the middle. I'm not getting it right. And that's the principle of water on water. Yeah, it's starting to swirl in the bottom. So you'll see that in creeks, there'll be a step or a log that falls over. There's always a plunge pool in the middle. Um, and so the water falls into that, de-energizes, and usually, just below it, you'll have a, a little one. A little second step, falls in the first, bigger one, pulls. The second, the second one creates that pull yep. for the other water to flow on to, onto the top of. Yeah. So you get that water on water. So that's another design. Cole does his mostly with the grader. And so coals are about cutting across the water and having a spills at either end, and one spill slightly higher than the other. So a coal will work out, this is the side I want the water to spill and spread out. But if I, um, plan B, if I get a big flood event, I want to be able to spill some on the other side at a slightly higher level. Yeah. There's some simple principles that you get right, they work. Anything else? All right. Just one thing I think is, what Tim just did there with a few, what, four, four little pebbles? Yep. You can do that out there. Yep. With, might scale it up a little bit, but if you're, you're working to the scale that your, your system is. So if you've got a small creek, maybe only your, or maybe even just a shovel, get out there with a shovel. And a slightly bigger, you might use a bobcat. Basically, just to tailor the equipment and whatever you're doing to the scale of the, the, whatever the issue is you're working with. And so that's where, you know, you can make it as cheap as you like. And it's about where you put them. So look for bends. So we banked the water up there. That's lifted a bit. It was all going around there in the main channel now because we banked it out, it'll flood out into a floodplain. Um, so we build banks tend to be on bends back the water out and it'll flows out the side and we'll see it down there. Um, probably another thing I to do is mix up leaky weirs with rocks with solid ones. Particularly on steeper country, we go up in the steeper country, we'd use a lot more leaky weirs um, because they, they slow the water down, but they're not having as much energy. They're a lot less likely to um, blow out than a solid one. So more leaky ones up there in the high country uh, interspersed with solid ones, more solid ones down here.